Hello, my friend. My name is Alan Bagg, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. We are having a look at being filled in the presence of God. So often we trying to live life and we try and live it out of our own ability. It's uh, whatever we may, our education might be, our skill sets, our abilities. We may have been trained in a certain way. But I don't know about you. Sometimes that does fall short. Very often I land up in a situation and you sit there literally saying, I don't know what more to do. And it could be in the natural, in your own mind, your own skills, you don't know what to do. But the one who does lives in you. God's full wisdom is within each one of us. If we are born again, His presence is in our lives. And I can promise you, you draw into the presence of God, you will be filled with His presence. And when you are filled with His presence, the full power of God manifests through your life. And you will see that you all of a sudden know what to do, you know how to do things, and there's a supernatural aspect to what you do, and you see the results that God desires for you to walk in. Enjoy this. I'll see you later. God wants to use His church to demonstrate His glory in the earth. Now that's an amazing thing about our God. He's not just some arrogant God that sits up on a pedestal like any other statue or false god and you have to come and just obey him otherwise if you don't he'll destroy everything that you are that's not our god our god came to the earth in flesh and dwelt amongst us to show us the way of the kingdom and demonstrate his love and how we can be that same body and demonstrate the same love and that we serve an awesome god and a mighty god and that he draws men to Him. He's not expecting men to come to Him. He draws them. He, go, he reaches out and invites everybody in. See, most religion, all religion really, is the uh, foolish endeavors of a man trying to get to God. And that's why Christianity is not just another religion. It's not another religion. It's not one of the alternatives. See, all religion is false, all false religion is man trying to get to God. But God in His grace and His love and His kindness stepped out of heaven and He came to man. Oh, glory to Jesus. And now has made the way open that every one of us can walk in the same glory, the same power. Lord, show me your glory. Say that now. How many want to see the glory of God in your life every single day? And yeah, we see in Luke chapter 5, verse 12, it happened when Jesus was in a certain city. Behold, a man who was full of leprosy saw Jesus, and he fell on his face and implored him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing. Be cleansed. I am willing. I am willing. Family, clear it up in your mind now, once and forever, that never again do you need to pray, Lord, if it's your will. Sickness is not God's plan. It is not His will. It is a lie from the devil. It is under the curse. You can read it in Deuteronomy 28. And the curse came as a result of sin, and it's a work of darkness. Jesus came to destroy the work of Satan. I shout a bigger amen than that. Jesus came to destroy the work of the enemy, and he redeemed us from the curse. Galatians 3 verse 13. He became the curse, for it's written, Cursed is he who hangs on a tree. Why? So that the blessing, the blessing may come upon you also. Poverty is under the curse. It's not God's plan to try and humble people. That is a lie. I will fight that with everything I have in me and every scripture available. Never will I apologize that God wants you prosperous. He wants you well. He wants you healthy. He wants you walking in the fullness of everything He has for you. Hallelujah. And so he's the one that stepped down into that miry clay and pulled you out. Amen. And he saved you and set you free. Oh, yeah. Just clear it up right now. God is willing. Think of anything 
that God has promised in His Word. If you will, will you make me whole? If you will, will you prosper me? If you will. You don't have to ask that anymore. He stated it. I am willing. Shout out, my God is willing. See, anybody that says, if it's your will, hasn't read the Bible yet. That comes from a place of uh, unbelief, place of doubt. We are not a people of unbelief. We know the will of God. Not arrogance, it's just confidence. It's knowing. It's knowing. It's knowing. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And once you know it, you have it. Amen? I am willing, be cleansed. And immediately, when? Immediately. I'm ready for some suddenlies. Amen. 2018, no more waiting. Amen. Say immediately. immediately. The leprosy left him, and he charged him to tell no one, but go and show yourself to the priest, make an offering for your cleansing as a testimony to them, just as Moses commanded. However... The report went out around concerning him all the more, and great multitudes came to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. So, circle the word so. He himself withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. He himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. Family, I want you to see the word so. So is a result. People came for healing. What did he do? He prayed. He realized that he had to spend more time with God than he was before. Oh, come on. You've got to get a hold of this. If Jesus, as the Son of God, found it necessary that when he prayed for one person, they were healed. And when the demand increased, he had to often withdraw and be with God and pray. Why? To fill up again. Amen. To fill up again. Oh, come on. You've got to get a hold of this. Amen. Acts 10.38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power and went about doing good and healing all who were sick and oppressed the devil for God was with him now get a hold of that that's what we're talking about here that God is with Jesus it's through the power that he's healing but once that power started flowing remember last week we saw that when he was walking what happened a woman pressed through the crowd and tried to come to him the woman with the issue of blood and she touched his garment. And what happened? Power flowed. Jesus stopped and said, who touched me? They said, how can you say who touched you? Everybody's touching you. He said, no, power flowed out of me. So family, you understand when power flows, it must be filled again. As the power flows, it must be filled again. See, the word we're talking about is dunamis. Dunamis, dynamo power. You know what a dynamo is? The dynamo needs to be, it's, it's a generator. It has to be, the wheel needs to turn to generate the electricity. But you stop turning the wheel, the, power, the light will go off. The potential's still there. The power's still in the machine. But it needs to be filled again. So you think of it this way. Your car has a dynamo in it. It's called an alternator. It's a power generator. When your lights, when you get in your car and you turn the key, a motor swings the engine and then it starts. Now that works on petrol, but you've also got electricity firing the, the spark plugs. When you turn on the radio and the air conditioner and the, and the lights, all of that's electricity. Where do you think that power is coming from? That's coming from your battery. There's a battery in your car supplying electricity. Now, if you took that battery and I brought it inside you and attach a light bulb to it, then that light will still burn. But if I left it on for a long time, eventually the light bulb would dim and go out. Now, the battery still has the ability to carry electricity, but it needs to be recharged. 
So when you turn on your lights in your car, the b light's burning, but while the engine's running, it's turning that alternator and dunamis. You're getting a dynamo. is putting power back into the battery. So even if you turn the car off, you come back and you turn it on, there's enough power waiting. You turn that key and it'll swing that engine. You seeing this? But if the dynamo is broken, the alternator is not working, then all of a sudden you get in your car one day and what happened now? Where's the power? It's empty. Car's not going anywhere. So when you're born again, remember Jesus said when you're saved, you receive the Holy Spirit. He spoke to his disciples and breathed on them after he was raised from the dead, and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. That's the point they were born again. And so what happened when they were born again, they had received the Holy Spirit. But then he said to them, now go and wait until you receive power from on high. In other words, if you can put it this way, when you give your life to Jesus, he hands you the battery. You now have power. Oh, come on, you've got to get a hold of this. But once you're born again, you got the battery. But if you never get filled, the battery will run out. That's why you see people that go to church. And if you ask them they love Jesus, yes, amen. You love Jesus? Yes, hallelujah. Glory. But they're sour and they're angry and they're fighting with everybody. But they're Christians. Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on now. And then something goes wrong, and they, ah, oh, glory. <laughs> All things work together for good. God's teaching me a lesson through this. Why don't you deal with it? It could be the will of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> but there's no power. No power. Come on, have you ever been to a meeting in a building that says church on the wall, but when the guy gets up, it's like, when he speaks, it's like, <laughs> It's like baby powder, just dry. Come on, how have you ever been in that? It's like, well, how long is this message going to take? And, you know, because I don't understand anything he's saying. I hear words, but I'm not getting. Come on, what, how do you know what I'm talking about? But then you go to another place, step in, and then just, just the greet at the door says, welcome home. God's in this house. Why? That's someone who's prayed up. Oh, come on, you've got to get a hold of this. You see, Jesus said you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Remember, he said that the Holy Spirit is with you now, but I need to go and he will be in you. See, when you pray in the Holy Spirit, when you pray in other tongues, what's happening is you're spinning that generator. Every time you get in the presence of God and you worship Him and pray in other tongues, you are generating that, that dunamis, you're filling up, filling up. Filling up, filling up. Amen. So when you lay hands on somebody, yes. Amen. that power flows. Amen. That's when the healing takes place. And Jesus is filled with power. He's got the Holy Spirit in him, but he recognizes he needs more and he spends time praying. Number one, to fill again. Number two, to hear the instruction. And when you obey an instruction that you've heard from God and the power of the, God, uh, power of the kingdom of God, you're going to see phenomenal signs and wonders start to happen in your life. Have a look here. Yeah, verse 17 happened on a certain day as Jesus was teaching. There were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. The power of the Lord was present. For what reason? Yeah. To heal. The power of the Lord was present. Why was the power present? He prayed. He was filled. Jesus didn't go anywhere without being filled. You know, it's not once when someone came, can I be healed? I, I, you caught me early. I still have to go pray. He was always ready, always ready, always ready. Always ready. Always ready. Always ready. Yeah. 
When he's walking along, that woman grabs on his jacket. He didn't even have to say, whoa, just hang on. I must go pray, but then I can pray for your healing. No, he was so charged up that when she pulled on that anointing, it flowed out of him. Come on now. How often do you want your alternate in your car to work? Every time you start it. Isn't that right? Because even starting it draws from the battery. You've got to put that back in. So when you wake up, good morning, Lord. Already you're walking in power. So I need to get into the presence of God early so that I can draw on power. Stock up for the day. Come on now. You getting a hold of this? Because you never know when someone's going to need healing. Someone's going to need an encouraging word. Someone's going to need a gift. Someone's going to need something from heaven. And you are God's hand. You are His mouth. You are the conduit that God wants to work through into the lives of other people. Say this, the power is present to heal. Power is present to heal. Behold, men brought on a bed a man who was paralyzed, whom they sought to bring in and lay before Jesus. And when they could find, not find how they might bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the housetop, and let him down with his bed through the tiling into the midst before Jesus. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to him, Man, your sins are forgiven you. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is he who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? And when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said to them, Why are you reasoning in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or rise up and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has the power on earth to forgive sins. And he said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, rise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Immediately he rose up before them, took up what he had been lying on, and departed from his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed, and they glorified God, and were filled with fear, saying, we have seen strange things today. Notice they were, how many were amazed? Family of God, how many of you want your family amazed? How many of you want your work colleagues amazed? How many of you want your neighbors amazed? They were all amazed and they said, we have seen strange things. Bump your name and say, strange is normal for me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We have seen strange things. Come, come have a look here, Matthew chapter 9. This is the same account, but I want you to see something else that Matthew brought up that I think is so powerful. Look at this. Verse 1, Jesus got into a boat, crossed over, came to his own city. Behold, they brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, 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 hello. Remember the woman? She's a daughter of Abraham. I'm talking about covenant talk here. This guy's reaching out in covenant faith. Son, be of good cheer. Your, son, your sins are forgiven you. At once some of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemes. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Arise and walk, that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, and he said to the paralytic, Arise, take your bed, and go to your house. And he arose and departed to his house. Listen to verse 8. When the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, who had given such power to men. Oh, you might have missed that moment, did you? It didn't say they had marveled and glorified who had given God power to this man, Jesus. 
they are amazed because they've seen power flowing that they've never seen before. Can, can you just imagine the picture? Jesus is in his house and he's busy preaching. Just could be like something like this, yeah. Packed full of people, but it's wall to wall at the doors. No one can even get in the door. And while he's busy speaking, he's busy preaching. The Bible says he's teaching the word. What do you think he's teaching? The Spirit of the Lord's upon me. He's anointed me. Isaiah 61. That was his message. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovery of sight of the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. He's preaching the gospel, the word of healing and deliverance. How many Christians today have given their life to Jesus and go to church, but have never stepped further than that point? God wants us to be more than simply believers. He wants us to be believers walking in His authority and power. How many of you want to see the power of God working in your life all the time? How many want to see a continuous flow of a manifestation of blessing? In this series, Alan Bagg will help you to discover how to put the power of God in you to work. You will learn how to be a spirit-filled believer and you will discover how to walk in kingdom-style living. When you learn to live God's way, you're going to find your need for miracles becomes less and less because you become more purposeful in your way of living. In this series, Alan Bagg teaches practically on being filled with the presence of God. There's more to your Christian walk than just being born again. Walk in the power that comes through God's presence at work through you. Order your series online at allenbagministries.org or by getting hold of our team at Allen Bag Ministries through any of these details. We make these messages available because it is so important to get the truth that by hearing the Word of God repetitively, faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. We are renewing our minds. See, the first time I hear something, I go, Hmm, that's interesting. Second time I go, I get that now. Third time, oh, I believe it. Fourth time, well, now, you know, it's getting challenged. Do I really believe that? And only after hearing it over and over and over, you start to realize it now reprograms the way you think. And only when you're thinking differently will you begin to act differently. And that's when that'll control what we say and how we react in life. Now, here's the thing. Every person who's ever given their life to Jesus born-again believers have the presence of God in them. But now how does that presence manifest to the fullness of God where power flows out of you and affects the world around you? That's what I want you to tap into. Five parts that are going to take you into the depths of this truth. So make sure you get yours today. We got it on USB stick now where you can just download those messages, get them onto your phone and listen to it over and over. Get yours today. I want to pray for you right now because the power of God is in that house right there where you're sitting. We're going to agree together for that. Father, I thank you for my dear friend and I know that no matter what the enemy has done to try and uproot that word from their heart, I bind every work of darkness in the name of Jesus and I cancel every foul attack against that home in the name of Jesus. Now, angels of God, your ministering spirit is hearkening to the voice of the Word of God, doing your master's good pleasure. Surround that home. Surround that person. Father, I thank you as you surround them with a shield of favor, that they would experience your presence and that they would be filled with your presence and that as they walk in their life, wherever they are, that you would manifest your goodness. I see miracles happening. I've seen promotions happening. I see bodies healed in the name of Jesus. I see prayers being answered in the name of Jesus. And Father, we praise you for it. We give you glory. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Well, praise God, my friend. Let me know because there's testimonies coming out of that prayer. And today even and, and the week ahead, as things happen, 
just drop us a note, write me an email, just let me know how God has blessed you through these programs. It really encourages us, and I can also share your testimony with other people, and that helps to bless and encourage them to believe for it as well. Well, that's all we've got time for today. I look forward to being with you again tomorrow. This is Alan Bagg reminding you Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. Were they called to equip believers to flourish in their ministries? Alan and Janine Bagg are the senior pastors of the Bay Christian Family Church, one church in many locations. Many locations, one church, one vision. It is one church multiple locations. Alan and Janine Bagg invite you to join us this weekend at the Bay Christian Family Church for some great times of worship in God's amazing presence, for faith-building messages from God's uncompromised Word, and for some great times of fellowship with the family of God. Wherever you're able to, Join the family at the Bay Christian Family Church this weekend for amazing times in God's presence and faith-building times in God's life-changing Word. If you're nowhere near any of our locations, feel free to participate in our services by joining us online at allenbagministries.org. For any information relating to the Bay Christian Family Church, our contact details or our locations, please visit us online at allenbagministries.org. If you missed any of this week's programs or if this week's Wisdom for Life programs have helped you, we encourage you to purchase the series featured on this week's Wisdom for Life programs and have them available to strengthen your faith when needed. The series featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs is available in digital format. So purchase yours online at allenbagministries.org or contact us to order your series at any of these details. Choose life.